G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this video in the Free Math Worksheet series. This week the topic is Roman numerals. Now it may be that in your curriculum Roman numerals isn't a topic for instruction in math class. Um, I've done a little bit of looking around and I can't see it in there. It's certainly a topic I learned at school and I suspect that you may have learned it when you were at school as well. So this is a topic that may be of uh, some interest to you and to show to your students out of you know developing a broader education for them but it may not actually be a core topic in the curriculum uh, that they learn. I still think it's worth teaching there are aspects of our own numbering system or numeration system which I'll talk about in a moment which are illustrated by looking at the way the Romans uh, put together numbers. We also have some uh, context for this in that you can still see Roman numerals today in various places. Now in old, on old buildings and old clocks you can still see it. Uh, where I grew up in the UK there are lots and lots of places where Roman numerals were used on buildings and clocks. Uh, but even in Australia we have buildings that have them. Page numbers in the front part of a book, the preface of a book, um, are often numbered using Roman numerals. Microsoft Word, interestingly enough, still has that, that option for numbering lists and, and pages. And even Hollywood movies, I was interested to see what would happen when we came to the year 2000 and thought maybe Hollywood producers would, you know, stop using Roman numerals, but they didn't, they kept on going. So um, there are some modern uses. Anyway, quick revision. There are seven symbols in the Roman system and they have uh, clearly defined values and they also mirror the first four places of our base 10 system by having ones, tens, hundreds and thousands. And of course to make values other than the ones that have a specific symbol the Romans would um, join them together and accumulate value if you like by adding the individual values. And so students can easily see that we can make up a value like a child's age might be 12 or something. Uh, you could add an X and two I's and they have the value 12. The interesting part about that is that there was also a subtractive rule. I should say there is a subtractive rule because we still use Roman numerals. Um, so that for certain values you would subtract one value from another. So I'll just add a couple more here. So we've got five and six. Clearly six is made up of five and one, but if we put the one in front of the five then we take it away and make four. Similarly we have nine as one before ten. So there's that extra rule that students need to uh, get used to. I'll just talk about a couple of value uh, Yes, values in the Roman system. I think while I write this. Here's the Roman numeral for a year that wasn't so long ago, 1999. And you can see each of the nines is represented in the Roman system using two characters. So here we have a hundred in front of a thousand, so it's a hundred less than a thousand. Then we have ten less than a hundred and one less than ten. This of course is a fairly complicated example so you wouldn't start with this with students but um, as I mentioned before Hollywood movies have been using Roman numerals to indicate the year of production for some time and so you'll find movies with that. The following year was a much more simple symbol in the Roman system, just MM, 2000s. Because the M represents a thousand we put two of them to make two thousand. And now of course we've moved on and we've got a few more symbols after that. This illustrates the comparison that I mentioned earlier between the Roman system and our own base 10 system. Our system of course is a place value system. So each digit is assigned a value or takes on a value according to the position that it is in, um, in the number. So for the number 2000, the 2 represents 2000 because it's in that place. The three zeros don't mean thousand of course, they mean no hundreds, no tens and no ones, forcing if you like the two to be in the thousands place. 
the Romans didn't have a zero, but they didn't need a zero because this M is not the same as a symbol for a hundred, a ten, or a one. We would they we would use they would have used different symbols for that. So there's absolutely no no need for zeros, and of course they didn't actually have one. Okay, so this just a little bit of discussion on the Roman system. Um, I hope that your students enjoy uh, playing around with it, if you like, even if it's not a, a formal part of the curriculum, as I said before. Um, and uh, I hope you found this video useful. So I'll talk to you next time and I'll see you then.